Hello everyone, this is Colleen Kennedy. I'm a volunteer with the Oregon section of ASME. And today I'm here to show you a presentation I've created on some of the tools you can use to research the history of your local professional section. Now I've discovered some methods to search for the histories of sections that were founded up to 1927. So we have quite a few that were up to there. I'll have to do some other research to show for sections founded after 27. But if it's before then, you can use these tools to start your research now. We'll be finding news about the people. They're really the story of how sections were created. And they're really just going to be the first steps I'll show you to get started. And once you try out these methods for research, it will take you down different avenues to continue your research. So you have to kind of plan in advance how the research will be used. This is something that you could spend a lot of time on. So think about some of the goals of what this kind of history research will be used for. As you go along, it's very important to create records of all the citations of what you found. If it's a journal article, a newspaper, a website or photograph, and that way later you can give the credit if you're going to create a publication or any kind of recordings on these materials later. So we'll begin with the founding of your section. You can use the website VLD asme.org and search for the section to see its founding the year. Also, you should keep track of the counties included in the creation of that section because it's possible the name of the professional section has changed, so you can use the counties to always find the right one you're looking for. Here we are at the VLD search page. On the left, where number one is pointed, I'm going to search for a group category called a section. It has a drop down menu and I've selected it there. Number two is pointed to a group location in the United States. Three, I'll type in the name of the section. I'm going to search for the Hudson Mohawk section. And four, I'll hit the search icon on the far right and see the information that it brings back. So here's the page for Hudson Mohawk section. And I can see the region is described as the Northeast, the charter membership organized 1919. So now I know when it was first created and I can do additional research based on the year and documents for 1920, that'll be the first year that anything was put into a publication about a section founded the previous year. It says here the headquarters city is connected in New York and also a list of the counties that were included there. So I'm definitely looking for that section, possibly it's still called Hudson Mohawk, that was founded 1919, connected in New York. Here we go on the internet. The first tip I'd like to give you is a way to find the yearbooks that are scanned for all the years up to 1927. This website has a catalog and that link will take you there. So all of the ASM yearbooks through 1927 are scanned. And here we are. This catalog page shows you yearbook, American Society of Mechanical Engineers, and down below they have more information about these volumes. As I scroll down the page, I can see on the left side the yearbook year, and then it says full view. That's where you can pick and see the scan pages for that entire yearbook. If I keep going down, I'll see they go to 1919 and then 1920. Again, you have to pick that year after it was created because that's the 
first year, they'll actually publish information about sections made the year before. I'll pick on that left side menu that says Full View for 1920. This is what the search looks like, and they have a viewer screen you can use. It'll open up here into that first title, but at the top of the page, they have an empty box you could use for searching. You could arrow left and right to have it go forward and back in the book, or you could also simply pick on the page or use the scroll bar to go up and down as well. So the PDF viewer is pretty powerful. You can scroll down and just read information, but we're really looking for these first year books for an area in the table of contents called local sections. Your goal is to record those names of the first volunteer leaders they call the executive committee. You can search for those names or cities or other information while we have the viewer open. It's good to get as much as possible from this book because it's really considered a primary source. It was the publication of ASME for that year. So I've scrolled down in that book and I found here where they list the information for the local sections. When I go to that page, I can start reading through and I see the one I'm looking for that includes Schenectady, New York. And again, they have renamed the section. At the time it was created, it was called Eastern New York section. Organized 1919, they had 145 members. And on the next page, they listed the names I'm looking for. And here they are, the executive committee. So the first chair, H.G. Reist, R-E-I-S-T. Now there's other names here, and they're going to be also valuable to do searching, but now you've got that first name. You have a city, you have year um, 1919 when events started to happen. As I use the search engine, I can also see that they include part of that yearbook that is an alphabetical list of member names. So I can confirm that he was actually a member and see the other members and what cities they lived in in an alphabetical list. So we'll begin the search for information on these people. Our goal is to find the year they became a member and sometimes they'll put down two years because sometimes people joined as a different grade, what they called the junior member. That was typically for people that were first what they had as early career or if they were still in a college section. But the city where they were will also be good for searching later with some of the tools I'll show you. So there's the name, R-E-I-S-T, in the search box at the top of the screen. When I went to that page, it showed me for that member the name H.G. Reist, 1889-1893. So he was a junior member for four years became, before he became a full member in 1893. I also have information about his work history, a manager, 1909-1912, and then vice president, Designing Engineer, Alternating Current Machinery, General Electric Company, and then the address in Schenectady, New York. So we have information about his employer, the years he was a member, and some of his job titles. I went back to one of the other yearbooks in 1890 to see information, and I did find him also listed down below it's showing May 15, 1889, when he joined as a junior member, and they had listed where he worked in Lynn, Massachusetts. So right now, I don't know. Did he grow up in New York? Or perhaps he's from Massachusetts, too. You're going to become the detective and use these cities and names of companies to do the research.
back to the internet. A real good source is also going to be another volume that they have in the catalog called the Transactions of ASME. I'm going to find again information after the year the section was founded. So they were founded in 1919. I'm going to search for 1920. They have information that they record in these transactions very often about section meetings too. So 1920, the transactions of ASM. And I went down and searched and they have under the section for Eastern New York, they listed the professional section meetings they had. It looks like January, February, March, and April. Now these names are most likely professionals, but would also be members of the section. So I have additional names here, C.E. Johnson, Stevenson, S.A. Moss, Gas Warfare, a section meeting on bearing metals by C.H. Bierbaum. So you can see each of these could be its own avenue for information on the founding of the early section and some of the members' names that were involved. So now you have the cities and some names and dates to start your search. Be aware, this can become a bottomless hole of information that goes deeper and deeper the longer you spend researching. And that's why it's good to kind of reflect and decide ahead of time, what are your goals? So you can actually finish your research and do some publishing. Do you want to write perhaps a newsletter article? Do you want to write a book? Do you want to have information simply on your ASME communities page about the history? Decide ahead of time, start small so you can actually have something to publish and get started. And then you can always expand upon it. But the more time you spend, it just grows bigger and bigger as you go. A key thing is to look for photos or illustrations. That's really going to tell the story whenever you find them. If you don't go down a certain avenue, for example, I found names of people that you know did a presentation at an event, I may not search for them now, but keep notes of that because that will be sort of that next phase of research you might want to expand onto. As you get started, you'll start to form a list of questions that you want answered. Well, these are the questions I had when I started my research. Obviously, who were the first volunteer leaders? I couldn't find much written about my section having meetings, but I could find stories about the people and where they worked and those companies. So I'm still interested why did the volunteers start the section? What was happening? What was in the news? What was going on? If you can find any information about these early meetings, even if they list basics, where it was going to be held, how often it was held, the title of a technical event, that also kind of tells the story of the setting of that time when the section was first founded. It will very often be connected with local issues and news. Here in Oregon, it was very closely connected with adopting the boiler and pressure vessel code as part of the early laws that were created around the equipment was why the section got founded. But there's going to be different local issues in every section. So having the information about the companies volunteers worked for was important because that kind of defined them. It defined sort of their purpose and their professional network of people. As you do research, it's good to also get information on what college they went to because that can be another term you can use for searching and perhaps find information about a biography. Another question was, who was the first member in my 
section or from my state. I went back to that catalog search because I got curious about the first one they had scanned for 1880. It's not very long. It was 28 pages, but it's a pretty interesting read. They have the names of the first elected officers. Each of them could be an entire book and story, I'm sure. But then they started to go on and had about seven pages listing the names and addresses of all the members. We don't have any from the state of Oregon listed here, although I do know the name of the first member that was in Oregon. Although he came from another state, he was actually part of this founding membership in 1880 as well. So this is going to be another list you could look at because they included a lot of information like company names, addresses, and cities and states for all the members. Sadly, some of the best information will be when you search and find someone's obituary. A really good one I found that's free is this website findagrave.com. What's good about it is very often they have connected in their links to newspaper articles or other materials that you can use in your research, although literally it is to find a grave in the United States with cities and people's full names or the birth or death year. It's very easy to maneuver through. So try to get some information perhaps on the city they lived in, a college, companies, or perhaps other volunteer positions they held to use in your research. And they may have also been involved in other civic involvement in their cities. Volunteer leaders were typically in the newspaper. So a website that I've enjoyed is called newspapers.com. You can get a free trial, give it a try. I'm not encouraging you to spend money on anything, but many libraries also have an account you can use for free to go here. You'll type in perhaps the name of someone, a span of years you want to research, a city, or just a state like Oregon or New York. Person's name. I found information about our Hudson Mohawk chair, H.G. Reist here. Now this one was from 1929 when they were taking part in a GE Engineers event where they were traveling to Tokyo, Japan. So Schenectady in this 1929 newspaper article and it had quite a bit about him. I realized he really was a pretty top manager at that company. And it talked about different technical papers they were presenting. I have many clippings about Reese in here. This is just one example. So the old tried and true Google.com is definitely a good search engine because they can take you to Google book citations and Google Scholar, academic papers they wrote, and different parts of books in the public domain that they have scanned. It'll also be good because you can see if they were also involved in other engineering societies. Include maybe the name of their college or their year of graduation when you do the research too. That will possibly even give you that connection if they had an obituary or a biography written. I did my search and I found some from the um, American Institute of Electrical Engineers. Now this was published back in 1930 because they were talking about H.G. Reist retiring. So I had information again about the name of the, con uh, the company uh, that he worked for. I know also then that year of retirement I didn't open up the article, but the abstract had some information I could use. Other research brought me this interesting one, Dr. Reese biography, Hudson Mohawk Bird Club. I almost skipped over this one, but then it did put down there engineering. 
GE, Lehigh University. I'm like, well, that's him because I knew his school. I knew when he was born and what company he worked for. Sure enough, he was in the Hudson Mohawk Bird Club. As a matter of fact, they have a bird sanctuary named for him for land he donated in the state of Pennsylvania. And because of that, and having made that bird sanctuary, they have a biography of him. And it talked about his work with General Electric, professional sections he was part of, honorary degrees, um, and also uh, the name of his college in here and what year he graduated. I was surprised and got very lucky. And you might get lucky too in your research. They had a picture of a field guide for the sanctuary in his name. And I thought, wow, that's pretty good. I've gotten pretty far with this fellow, but I kept going a little bit more. And working with General Electric, I realized he was really also involved with obviously electrical engineering. And he was one of the founders of the Schenectady um, Electrical Engineering Society. And they had annual reports and books that I could see on Google Book Search about him. And they had another one when I just looked up his college name, graduation year, and his last name, the Electrical World and Engineer. This was in 1902. And again, it found information about him. And I hit gold because they have an article about his whole life and really in depth about his technical achievements and his accomplishments and a very nice picture of him. Up till now, he seemed kind of like a ghost, but until you see someone's picture, now you realize they were a real person. And as I read this article that went on for several pages in the book, here's the connection I've been trying to find. The connection with ASME. In 1889, he resigned his job in Harrisburg Car Company in order to accompany ASME engineers on the memorable European trip of the summer. His attention was drawn to the rapid development of electrical, determined to become identified with the branch of the engineering profession. He served with ASME for many years, worked in electrical engineering, and that was fine. People actually worked in many different kinds of jobs but now I've made that connection where it starts to finally go off in a branch that I can now actually research more. What was this trip to Europe? Why did they go? Why did he leave Pennsylvania? And what did he do with ASME and the founding? So from the bird club to his personal history to finding the transactions, all these are available to you, and you could get lucky like me to find information on the first chair of your section. So it's not the end, it's the beginning of your research, but you can see they're really telling the stories of people, people that were in the news and you can find information about. So good luck to you, and I hope you find information on your professional leaders in your section.